This is a dual extrusion guide for both design and slicing on all of the most popular pieces of slicing software. Recently, I reviewed the GTEC A10M and I found it had amazing potential, but not without some little niggling problems. I've been putting some time into designing and learning how to slice so I can make my own dual extrusion models instead of just the ones off the internet. Now, dual extrusion requires specific knowledge depending on the makeup of your printer. There are two popular types. The first is like the GTEC A10M, and that is to have two extruders and a single shared nozzle, and other printers traditionally have two extruders and two separate nozzles. The following is a summary of how that works, the problems that are presented when it comes to 3D printing, and also the solutions. Here is a setup we have on the GTEC A10M. It's dual extruder and single nozzle. As you can see when we fade it, the two bits of filament mix inside the nozzle and come out the hot end. If we were to run that at 50% of each, we can actually color mix. Now clearly if we only run one extruder, we're gonna get 100% of that color and 100% if we run the other extruder. The trouble is when we wanna transition from one extruder to the other, as you can see, it pushes the old one through before the new one is extruded. You should be familiar with this from every time you change color in your nozzle. As the new one comes through, it pushes through a little bit of the old one and it takes a little bit of time for the color to completely transition. This is a prime block. Every time it changes color, it comes over and extrudes a layer so the filament can change, as you can see in this example here, from one to the other. If you get this right, it'll give very clean separation. In this example here, it's not quite big enough block, so it doesn't have enough time, and therefore the color bleeds instead of being a clear separation between the white and the gold. Okay, so we know we need a priming block or tower if we're sharing a nozzle, but what if we've got a machine with two separate hot ends to go with each extruder? The other most popular design is dual extruders and dual separate nozzles. You have to set the offset in the firmware and the filament path is always completely separate in between. When you extrude 100% of one or the other, they don't affect each other, there's no mixing at all. But the trouble is when you're extruding with one, the other one is always oozing. And when this oozing extruder is needed again, well that oozing is gonna end up on the surface of the model. I don't have a printer like this to demonstrate, but consider an octolapse where the hot extruder is sitting to the side oozing while the photo is taken. When it comes back, that oozing is gonna collect on the surface of the model. This is an ooze shield. As you see from the following animation, it builds up around the outside of the printer. The idea is that all the imperfections and oozing is captured on the ooze shield, and once you separate it, the print inside is perfect. So hopefully now you have a better understanding of some of the problems you're likely to encounter. Before we start to slice, we need to set up the slicing software, and I'm gonna cover it in Simplify 3D, Cura, Slicer, as well as ID Maker to be as comprehensive and hopefully as concise as possible. Originally, I thought in Simplify 3D, I could start with an existing profile and simply add an extruder, but unfortunately that did not work. Instead, I found I needed to go to the configuration assistant. Not ideal, but for the GTEC A10M, I started with this Rostock Mini Pro Dual. As you can see, the bed size and configuration is completely wrong, so you need to come back through and change all of your settings here to get it back the way it needs to be. In Cura, you can see that I've added the GTEC A10M, and to do that, I added a printer, put in all of your dimensions, and you set the number of extruders to two, and then you can configure them individually once again. In Idea Maker, if you come to printer settings, you'll have the chance to add or duplicate a printer. And once again, on this main screen, we can set the amount of extruders, and then we can set them up independently. Please note that for all of these, if you have a dual extruder, dual nozzle machine, you'll need to tell it how far apart they are so it can correctly calculate the offset and make the correct G-code so the two different colors align when you're printing. In Slicer, we're a little bit stuck until we enable expert mode. It'll give you a clue down the bottom that you haven't done that. To do that, we need to come to our preferences and then change the mode from simple to expert. Now when we come up to our printer settings, we can set the amount of extruders that we want by adding one here and then configuring them independently. Now that we have our printer set up, it's time to do the actual slicing. Once again, I'm gonna cover each of the most four popular slices. Did you know that everyone's favorite 3D printing test boat, the Benchy, has a dual extrusion version? We're gonna use it to illustrate the process here. You can see I've imported the two separate halves, but the problem is they're not aligned with each other. By default, most slicing programs want to position things nice and neatly in the middle of the bed. Now, before we proceed, it's a good idea to get all of your settings in place, and that includes coming to the additions and turning on the prime pillar. If instead of using an ooze shield, you can turn that on here also. 
Now it's important to set this to all extruders and your pillar width to a number after trial and erroring is big enough to give your nozzle enough time to transition cleanly from one color to the other. The location I like to have it in the middle so it combines and the speed multiplier is something you might experiment with because you don't care at all about quality so you might like to bump the speed right up just to get it over with quickly. I'd recommend changing all of your extruder settings and your retraction before going any further. Essentially what we're trying to do is to move these two in position to get them perfectly aligned but it's going to be impossible to do without the support of the program. If we select both of them and come up to the edit menu there's an option for align selected model origins. That's going to group them together but they're not locked at this stage. You can still move one and separate them. Therefore an additional step is to group them together. Now if we try to move them they'll stay aligned. Now if I undo back to how it was, Simplify 3D actually has an inbuilt tool for this. If we come up to Tools, Dual Extrusion Wizard, we'll have a dialog box come up where we can assign which extruder we want to print which of the models. You can see here it says Group and Align Models is ticked, and that means it's going to do those two steps for you automatically as well as assigning which color is which. Now even on a mixing machine like the A10M, Extruder 1 is always the one on the right and Extruder 2 is always the one on the left. You can see that it's combined these two together and also set up two processes for the two different colors. Now when we come to prepare to print, it'll ask us which we want to include and we want to do both. And then when we hit OK, we should have our preview with our prime block. Now in Cura, we need to come up to our settings and configure setting visibility. You can then either type in dual in the filter or scroll down until you find these options here and you want to tick the ones that you want to play with. So we've got our ooze shield and our prime tower and other things here like picking the size and position. Now before we go any further we need to assign an extruder to each one. So we're going to right click and we can see extruder 1 is ticked here. Right click on this one and change that to extruder 2. Now we can hold shift, click both of them, right click and merge the two models. All of our dual extrusion options are here. I'm just going to leave it on Prime Tower. You can see you get a little preview of where the Prime Tower is going to be. That's this shadow here. When we're ready, we can slice and then have a look at how it's going to be. So here's our preview. We have Extruder 1 and Extruder 2. And we can see we have a Prime Tower. It does it hollow in Cura. And I think the idea is that you can set it to wipe across the top so it kind of counts like an ooze shield as well. ID Maker is a little bit easier. I've imported my two models separately. And when you click on one of them, you can set which extruder you want. You can see I've set left and right. Now if I hold shift so I can select both, I can come up to model and come to align selected models. Now when I come to start slicing, I can input my other required options. I can confirm here in per model extruder that the two parts are set to an extruder each. And I have absolutely zero settings here. So we're just going to import something from another printer. But on this next screen, we need to click on Advanced. And this is where we can come to Ooze and put on a white wall or a white tower. Or in this case, let's try both. And then when we're done, we can hit Slice and we should come up with our preview. We can clearly see in this preview the two different extruder colors and everything has worked as it should. Obviously, you wouldn't have this one as well as this one in your additions. Slicer is the, perhaps the most annoying one of these to set up. And we have to do a couple of extra steps. So we're going to start by adding the first of the files. And for some reason, Slicer doesn't like this, even though the other slicers have no problem with it and Mesh Mixer reports no errors. But nonetheless, we will continue. We're going to double click on it and we're going to load a part. We click the second file and we can see that it's automatically put the two together. Now we're going to click on one at a time and set the extruder. So the default is fine for the first part. And then we're going to set this one to two. Then we're going to hit OK. Now we have to come up to Plater and we're going to export the plate as an AMF. Going to delete that XML off the end, hit save, and now we delete what we've just done and add back in our new file. Now Slicer is still not liking the file, but you can see that as I rotate around, you can see the two colors are distinct from each other. And when I come to my preview, now clearly I'm still having that same issue here where the SDL was recognized as damaged and therefore there's gaps in the model. But apart from that, it is working. The options for controlling ooze are pretty limited, but we do have ooze prevention here. And ticking that, when we come back and check the preview, we'll add our curtain around the outside. Now I can't find a way in this version of Slicer to show which is doing which, but when you look at the G-code, it is clear that it's changing back and forth between the two extruders with this method. Every time the extruder changes, it's either T0 or T1. So we can see we have a number of T0s, and if we search for T1, we have a number of those as well. So it is changing back and forth, it's just not very user friendly in communicating that to you. 
Now it's worth noting that I'm using the regular version of Slicer there, but if you have a Prusa machine and you're using Slicer Prusa Edition, there's a lot more options for dual extrusion and much more control over purge blocks and things like that. So I printed the Simplify 3D version on the A10M and the results are a little bit mixed. It's safe to say despite printing a little retraction tower to dial in my settings, I've still had a lot of trouble with stringing and the end result is only okay. That wasn't going to slow me down however, I needed a specific 3D printed vehicle to carry specific weights across a bridge for a bridge burning project I was doing at school. I therefore thought this was a good chance to design my first ever dual extrusion design. So here's my first ever dual extrusion design. As you can see, I have a bunch of separate parts here and I've color coded them for how I want them to be printed at the end. I've turned on a section view here to illustrate that although there are separate parts, it's gonna have rolling wheels and it prints all in one go. So if I slide this through, you can see that there's little gaps between everything and there's nothing ever over 45 degrees overhang apart from the inside of the tray, but it's easy to turn on support which should remove cleanly enough for that. When you're done, you don't need to do anything special when you export STLs, just all the individual files. You will reorientate them in your slicing software to get everything aligned and perfect. Here it is sliced in Simplify 3D and it was in fact a little bit of a disaster. The A10M is prone to stripping filament and then clogging. So this was my first attempt, this was my second and finally I was running out of time before I needed to have this done for school. So I scaled it down and did it at 50% and it turned out pretty good. I was mostly happy with it but I still have some retraction settings to dial in and some over extrusion as well. So instead I turned to my TiVo Tornado, printed it out all in one color, but really fast with the fat nozzle, and this is how it went. My apologies to your ears for the screaming, but I'm very proud of how excited they are while they're learning about engineering. That's gonna wrap this one up. As you can see, I've still got some ground to cover when it comes to tuning in the A10M. You can expect to find my problems and solutions in an upcoming video. Comment below, have you used these techniques before or has this video enabled you to expand your 3D printing horizons and try out something new? Thank you so much for watching and until next time, happy 3D printing. G'day, it's Michael again. If you liked the video, then please click like. If you wanna see more content like this in future, click subscribe and make sure you click on the bell to receive every notification. If you really wanna support the channel and see exclusive content, become a patron. Visit my Patreon page. See you next time.